In a bid to battle the raging coronavirus pandemic, the previously silent President Muhammad Buhari issues guidelines. And once again, the ruling All Progressive Congress APC loses another state to the Supreme Court as it dismisses an application to review its decision on the Zamfara state elections. This is PLOS Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome to the program. The approval of 10 billion naira to be released to the Lagos State Government on request and 5 billion naira to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC to procure facilities to support emergency responses. These and many more are part of the guidelines issued by President Muhammad Buhari in an effort to battle the raging coronavirus pandemic. Joining us in the studio is Martin Lumba, political analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. And we have joining us via telephone, Taiwo Akinlami, a legal practitioner. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, let's start with you, Martins. Uh, the amount is 10 billion naira for the Lagos state uh, um, government to help with this, uh, primarily, I guess, because of the um, increased number here. We have the highest uh, compared to other states. What's your take on this? The president, let's start with the president finally making a statement. When you say the president finally making a statement, let us be very certain. I'm choosing my words, you know, carefully. Um, we know that in this country, several years back, a statement just came on a news program, and on an election. Till today as we speak, nobody has been able to own up to that statement. And um, just, I believe, yesterday, former Minister of Education, Dr. Obi Ezekwesili, she said that we have a president who apparently is absent. Not absent-minded, but is absent. My understanding is that over the years, we've been talking about a cabal, a cabal. Perhaps one of the principal officers of the cabal is not there. Somebody else has now taken over. So, but be that as it may, well, coming at this time, it is not too late, but it is probably coming a bit late. But I worry about the fact that anytime we have issues, we just throw monies at those issues. There is nothing to suggest that there is a template by which these monies can be disbursed. All we hear is that yes, 10 billion has been approved and probably the working is in progress to release the money. Now, for Lagos State also, I've not really seen anything to suggest that the monies are going to be disbursed in this manner and all of that. Will, will that be fair, really? Because you know that we have, I mean, they're making isolation centers. The latest news well, is the emergency feeding for those who will be stuck well, at home. Well, referring to Dr. Ezekwesili again, she commended the Lagos State Government for the efforts that they have, I mean, so far put in place. But you must know that it is not sufficient for a man like me. I, I am usually very, very curious when it comes to monies being released to government people. Lagos is not really a poor state from all accounts. And um, if we are having additional 10 billion, it's a good thing. But at least every government should be held accountable. And I'm very worried about that. All right, uh, Taiwo, let's bring you in and talk about the amount that was released to the NCDC. Initially, they requested for an amount, it was released, and now they have this. Uh, some are saying this is a worldwide um, um, emergency. Um, isn't this a little bit too late, considering the fact that, I mean, we have shortage of testing kids, and there are allegations that uh, the cases we have might not be a, a, a pure representation um, of what is actually on the ground. Okay. Um, thank you for having me once again. I think that uh, the first thing we need to address is whether Africa as a continent is ready for the COVID-19 pandemic. The truth of the matter is that this uprising is going to bring out the beauty and the beat in us. 
And so the fundamental thing is that what is the level of preparedness at the level of healthcare, at the level of prevention, that is the fundamental issue. Now the federal government is leaving 10 billion. Uh, the federal government has not done the people a favor because the welfare and the security of the people shall be the problem of government. So the number one thing is this. Are we, are we ever ready and prepared? That's number one. Number two, is there a coordinated way of releasing resources? There is a 10 billion. The Labour status of Assembly just made a law yesterday, and by that law, the federal, uh, the state government is allowed to spend 20 billion in, in addressing uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Now, there is the Boer group who gave another 10 billion yesterday. There's a group of billionaires who are giving another countless billion. So the question is this, who is coordinating all of these resources? What are our needs? What do we need to pay attention to? Uh, is the money for prevention? Is the money for cure? Is the money to, pre to provide palliative for the citizens? Majority of Nigerians are poor. 82.5 million of Nigerians live on less than $1.9 per day. So when you look at that figure, Nigeria has the highest number of poor people in the world. Now, in the United States of America, $2 trillion dollars at their mark for stimulus for the people. And that is apart from the resources being spent to combat the, the pandemic. Now, the real pandemic here is under because 82.5 Nigerians, 82.5 million Nigerians are living on less than $1.9 per day. And you are asking them to sit at home. When they sit at home, are they going to eat human flesh? Are they going to eat their children? Those are, this, that is something that is yet to come to the radar of our conversation. And that is the something that is able to frustrate the whole idea of people sitting at home. Because most of our people are living in abject poverty. Um, Tawo, let me, let me interject. So fundamental issues. Tawo, let me interject. We are in an emergency, right? He has raised a lot of issues. How worried are you that as at this time, we don't have a clear picture or at least an idea of how these monies um, are to be expended, just the concerns that he has highlighted. How worried are you in comparison well, to other parts of uh, the country? Um, Taiwo, let's, let's take a question to Martin. Um, I'm very worried. I'm uh, apprehensive of what is likely to play out. Um, last week, I want to believe, yeah, last week, in Festac, there was a robbery incident, 7th Avenue. And where it occurred is not particularly very far from where you have maybe a military presence or so. And that is just a sample, a, a tip of the iceberg of what we're likely to see with this talk about uh, sit at home. I believe that the structure of combating the COVID-19 pandemic is not clear. There is nothing to suggest that people sat down to think, to say, this is how we're going to plan, this is how we're going to respond. That is on the one hand. On the issues that he raised, very brilliant uh, issues, I must confess. The truth is that the poverty level in Nigeria is simply overwhelming. Before now, I believe I'd been in this studio where I talked about the right way to go would not be to pursue minimum wage, but to fine tune the way the economy was being run. Today, here we are. You know, the price of crude, you know, it has gone below the benchmark that we had budgeted. And you know that we're a monoproduct economy. We're in deep trouble. We're likely to fall into recession. And you say people should sit at home. It calls for sober reflection. At but this what point this in is time, an emergency. Let me, let me interject because yes. when we say it's it, you're, you're, you're sounding like the government just wants everybody to sit at home. Yes. Apparently, there is an emergency. Let me take the question uh, to Taiwo. Taiwo, what would be the government did not just wake up and say, "Oh, everybody sit at home." The, you, we see what is happening. The, the, the pandemic is not peculiar 
to Nigeria. So away from the concerns about sitting at home, how can we make the most use of this time? And what strategies, in your opinion, uh, can the government begin to pursue to help you know, manage this situation so it doesn't escalate and degenerate to the point of like instances of robbery that uh, Martin's mentioned? Okay, uh, I don't have a problem with I don't have a problem with people sitting at home. WHO has made it abundantly clear there are six fundamental approaches by which we can combat this, uh, this pandemic. One of the things they have suggested, one of the strategies they suggested is the whole idea of social distancing. One of the ways by which you practice social distancing is to stay at home. Mm. So you keep yourself away from uh, people. Now, number two, they spoke about the issue of isolation. If you know you have come in contact with any, anyone who, is, who has tested positive or who came from uh, areas that are considered red zone, you isolate yourself. Now, these are fundamental uh, principles and strategies that have been shared. And I think they cannot be overemphasized coming from the World Health Organization. The point I'm making is this. In the developed world, places like France, America, and the rest, they are thinking about how to take care of their people when they stay at home. What I'm saying, that has not been part of our conversation. You know, many years ago, there was, uh, not many years ago, when there was a Jota, and uh, people were, were asked to sit at home in protest. Now, I tell you what happened in VGC. Some guys mobilized themselves after three or four days of staying at home, they approached the gate of VGC. In Oton, boys who were hungry, they approached the gate and they demanded that the gate should be open for them because they were hungry, they wanted something to eat. Uh, 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 and then the, the people in VGC had to set up a team to go and discuss with them and get them something to eat. So I'm not opposed to the whole idea of sitting at home. But I'm the plan to the for idea it. But just asking people to sit at home without, without clear plans. Without any provision. That's number one. Number two is the fact that I think what we can do best now is prevention. Because we don't have the capacity to handle the outbreak of the pandemic. We don't have it. So I think the strategy of government must be towards prevention. And if you are looking at prevention, we are looking at all of these social distancing, all these uh, health prat uh, uh, practices of washing hands and all of that, then most importantly, when we say we have 100 cases or 95 cases, the question we need to ask, how many people have we tested? If you are not tested, you cannot know the number of people who have been affected. So government has started in secrecy the whole idea of testing. So All right. what kit are we using to test? Who are we testing? Who is being okay. tested? I those are fundamental issues that we need to pay attention to. All right, that is Tyrone. the way I think we can, we, can, we can attack the pandemic. All right, um, I'll put that same question to you because right now everybody is coming up with ideas, suggestions, and ways that you know this the spread of this can be managed. And whether we agree or not, the government seem to be trying to do what they can at this point. And I mentioned before we started that the government was talking about giving food, food items to people. That's part of helping um, um, address uh, the issues that he talked about. When people are home, they get hungry and all of that. I want to just get your general idea on how we can solve this and the efforts of government so far, can it be more streamlined? Yes, it can be better streamlined. The fact of the matter is that minus the health issue, the economy itself is suffering. And you cannot address the pandemic without paying attention to the economy. What the West are doing, Europe, America, they are actually having a conversation around their economies so that the economies of these countries will not collapse. Even China, where all of this thing started from, you, you, you must understand that from Wuhan, the citizens have been encouraged to go back to work. 
Why? Because there must be a stimulus. There must be something that will keep the economy going. If there is no flow, everywhere will dry up. That is number one. Number two is that, indeed, in Lagos, apparently we have the highest population within Nigeria, perhaps within the confines of our space on the continent. Now, it is important that we manage the society minus the virus. The poverty level is so extreme that if for any reason Lagos is not able to contain the agitation for survival, it's going to have a ripple effect that even Abuja cannot be able to withstand, which is why I'm saying that releasing 10 billion, making uh, provision another 20 billion, there must be something to show that you're taking all of these things into account. Otherwise, it's a waste of effort. It's going to be another jamboree. After all, we have politicians who maybe during the elections, they bring out rice, they bring out Maggi, they bring out, but this is the time to properly plan. Before elections, we had, uh, what was that arrangement again by the vice president? Is it uh, money, some the trader money? If they had a workable template, this is the time to demonstrate it. All right, let's uh, take a look at some other issues that was raised uh, by that uh, statement uh, by the president, outlining some of the things that he has done and what they plan to do. And one of that is the evacuation of some NCDC uh, staff who had gone to uh, Brazzaville for a conference organized by the World Health Organization. And they're saying that they're going, some of that money will be spent to bring them back. One. Um, uh, of the concerns about that is the fact that these people might have the virus. And why are they being, that's the question, why are they being given a preferential treatment to bring them back? On the other hand, is the argument that these are essential um, trained staff who could help in the fight to contain the uh, pandemic. On what divide, on what part of the divide will you be, Taiwo? See, this is the truth of the matter. I, I think that uh, one of the major problems we have as a people is our capacity to prioritize what is your priority per time. It is very, very important. Your house is on fire. You are dancing Makota. It's not done that way. So the most important thing now, the United States of America today is saying that People, health workers all over the world are allowed to come to America. Now, now this is the point. We should be interested in how to prevent, very, very important, how many respirators do we have in Nigeria as of today to cater for a population of 200 million? So I think our greatest game changer, our greatest strategy to focus on prevention. That is what we will be focusing on. How much are we able to, to educate our populace, empower our populace to understand what the issues are so that they can protect themselves and prevent the spread of the virus? That must be our least strategy. Whatever resources we are gathering together now must look in that direction. Look at what happened in China. In 10 days, a hospital was built that will house 1,000 people in 10 days. Now, 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 are we able to pull that kind of uh, 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 record-breaking uh, effort? It is doubt. It is in doubt. Okay. So I think what we should do as a country today, knowing that we are not prepared, knowing that our health system is, is epileptic and dilapidated, we must be interested in prevention. So whatever money is being allocated must be allocated in the direction of preventing this virus. All right, Tyro. As plan B, as plan B, we can begin to look at where can we find uh, uh, the best of treatment in terms of respiratory machine and all of that. But in the in the in the immediate, we should be thinking about uh, uh, prevention. All right, Tyro. Um, let me let me ask you, Martin. So there, there's been Let's talk about efforts, and one of them is the conversion of NYC irritation camp and had um, uh, what they call had transit camps, um, stadiums across uh, the nation as you know isolation uh, 
uh, camps for isolation centers rather uh, for people who might uh, become infected uh, by the virus what's your take on that plan is it something that is way to go or you see maybe there are bottlenecks that might affect the smooth takeoff um it's good to have these uh, places ready apparently they must have information that the rest of us don't have meaning that the pandemic must have spread far and wide uh, beyond what they are admitting because all of these arrangements will suggest that they have some statistics that they are working with. However, it's a good effort. Again, what they are going to put in all of those places, I have no idea. Because apart from those camps, mind you, we have IDP camps. And we must know that the way they have managed the IDP camps, whether you're talking about grass cutting and what have you, it has been very, very below you know, par. So to that extent, I'm not expecting anything fantastic, but it is the way to go. Having said that, there must be provision. You know, he talks about prevention, but I, I want to believe that we have gone beyond the need for prevention. Of course, maybe to prevent others that have not been infected. But we must perfect the way by which we we'll manage those that have been infected. And of course, also manage the crisis that is likely to result from the dust to dawn curfew, from the shutting of borders between states and what have you. It's a huge crisis that we have on our hands. And if we do not plan, there is no strategy. We are not seeing it. In fact, everybody talks about pandemic, pandemic, pandemic. But we're not really seeing anything to suggest that there is a roadmap by which we can manage the crisis. All right, I'm told we have uh, two minutes, so I'll just go ahead and ask Tyro for his concluding thoughts, uh, particularly when it comes to the issue of fake news and misinformation out there. The statement actually cautioned that people uh, be mindful of what they consume as information. Uh, what do you have to say to that quickly in one well, minute? Well, my, my thought is very clear on that. Uh, this uprising, like both of said, we bring out the beauty and the business. So this is my thinking. Whatever information that comes to you is as powerful as the source of that information. That's what we call triangulation. Whatever information that comes to you, it is your responsibility to process information. Because those who pass information also pass help. So let's let's find credible sources to get information from. Number two. Let us stop spreading fear, intimidation. Let's spread hope. You know, people keep sending messages, you know, that they put people in fear and trepidation. That ought not to be so. We should spread hope, not fear. We should spread information with sources. We should start spreading information which sources are not verifiable. All right. That's very important. Thank you very much, Tyra. Thank you. All right, um, your final thoughts, but I'm going to take it from the angle of the retirees that are being asked to come, um, medical um, practitioners that are retired, they're asking them to come. What would you say to those who might hesitate, considering, of course, the precarious situation that they will be working in? Um, it's a good idea. Of course, we're aware that even the United States is calling for hands from across the globe. So um, calling retirees to come and give their you know, own input, I think is a good idea. But I also feel that because we don't really have the capacity to do what ought to be the standard practice, I would suggest that even within us here, our alternative medicine practitioners, they should be invited and they should also make their input felt. Thank you very much, Martins, for coming on the program. It's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. All right, we'll go on a short break, and when we return, the fate of the ruling party in the Zamfara governorship 2019 elections has been decided. Stay with us.